All right, today I'm doing a video on the Sprucer i3 clone and specifically on this issue. Have you ever had your LCD display look like one of these in Marlin 2.0 or even previous versions for that matter? If yes, follow this video and I'll explain you probably why that happens and how to fix the issue with a simple, with a simple capacitor. Here's the printer running. It's currently heating up and we have this probe going all the way from the printer to the oscilloscope. As the printer is heating up, we can see that there is a little bit of noise. I don't know if you can see that uh, on the power supply rail. But this is very faint actually. And it's in the region of plus or minus 0 uh, 0.05 volts, so that's 50 millivolts peak to peak or thereabout. And it's really not that intense and all this noise that you can see uh, comes from the switching power supply, the voltage regulators for the fans and the PWM controller for the bed and extruder heater that are currently running. But you'll see in a moment that as the stepper motors start to run, this noise will become a lot stronger. And that is actually what is causing the display to become garbled. Okay, the machine is starting to home now and it will then go through the bed leveling process and everything looks good over here. But if you go into the oscilloscope, you can see that as the motor move, oh my God, is that noisier. So let's take a look at what's actually happening. For every step, the driver sends a pulse and that pulse has an impact uh, both in terms of an electromagnetic field but also on the voltage sag. If high frequency noise reaches the LCD screen at some point it'll corrupt the data going over these wires. Now that just the heated bed is getting its PWM frequency applied you can see the slower fluctuations that come from the PWM controller and these are actually quite low frequency because the heated bed doesn't uh, really need a high PWM frequency to function. All right, extruder is hot and the print is starting. As you can see, Octoprint reports the temperature as stabilized. That's perfect. We'll now go over to the oscilloscope and you can see how this is fluctuating up and down. And keep in mind now this is 200 millivolt per division, which I can, uh, I don't know if you can see very well, make it a little brighter. So this is definitely going like 400 millivolt, uh, minus 400 to plus 400. So that's 800 millivolt peak to peak. It's starting to become very relevant because each one of these squares is minus or plus 200 millivolt. Okay, we're now printing the second layer and you can see how the printer moves a lot faster. LCD is still looking fine for now, but we'll see if we can get it to artifact. But if you go over to the oscilloscope, you can see that it's even noisier now. And keep in mind, this is still at half a volt per division. And this is fluctuating up and down quite a lot. So there's definitely a lot of high frequency noise and some low frequency noise from the uh, bed turning on and off and creating this fast voltage sag that you can see right here sometimes. And if you look at that, it's exactly what this little LED is doing, pulsating on and off with the heated bed, which is at 60 degrees. And so that draws quite a bit of power right now. I think this is 120 watts. The PSU is rated for 400, 400 watts, but that's a Chinese PSU. I wouldn't trust it to hold its um, output too much. And even if it did, there's still quite a long run of um, cable going from the power supply all the way under the printer and then connecting to the SKR 1.3 board over here, which is where we're measuring. 
even if the power supply was really, really good, electrical noise and voltage sag um, increases as the wiring gets longer because of the higher resistance. I think I can really exaggerate how that looks by going down to 100 millivolt per division and you can see how bad that noise looks. And that's really, really bad. And just to prove that this comes from the stepper motors, uh, we can pause the print. So let's pause this right here from Octoprint. Okay, we've paused. Printer is not moving right now. And there is still quite some noise. This comes from the heated bed turning on and off. Let's see if we can get this to show up in the oscilloscope. I'll pause the print again. And I can also set the bed temperature lower to make this effect a little bit more clear. Okay, we've now turned off the heated bed, Let's set it back up to 60 degrees. Okay, 60. Here we go, and look at that. So it turns out it wasn't the steppers as much as it's the bed. I wasn't expecting that, but I guess that's why uh, having an oscilloscope handy really does make a difference. Okay, so look at this picture and keep it in mind uh, that that's about 800 millivolt peak to peak or even a little more than that. Um, when it comes to electrical noise. And we'll take a look at that after I add a simple 100, sorry, 1000 microfarad capacitor to the input of the SKR board. So let's go and do that. What I will be using is one of these 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors and it's important that it's 16 volt or even 25 volt uh, because it needs to have a rating that's slightly higher than um, the voltage it will be used at otherwise the capacitor will degrade quickly and blow up which we definitely don't want. So I'll remove the probe here. Get this fan out of the way. And we can access the SKR 1.3 and we're going to put the capacitor right here where the 12 volt input plug is located. All right, I've now put the capacitor in here, negative to negative, positive to positive, and it's inserted directly into the plug. And let's turn on the power supply again. And right off we can see that the noise coming out of the power supply is about uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak. And that's when it's not doing anything at all. We're going to connect to the printer, once again here in Octoprint. And try to print the same file. And the heated bed is now warming up. And the interesting thing is there is not a lot of noise initially because it is solidly on. It's only when the PWM controller starts pulsating the uh, power for the heated bed on and off that it starts to get really noisy. So we'll have to wait. And as you can see, it's still pretty darn noisy. But although it doesn't look like it, it's way less pronounced than before. And the underlying fast switching noise is far less noticeable. 
Now this capacitor is still, pre uh, still probably isn't fast enough and a better solution would be to also put a ceramic capacitor on the LCD itself. But um, right now this does the job pretty well.